the most important thing about writing, especially about having a blog, is to be consistent. When we started our site, uh, I posted just once a week, every Sunday. I wasn't sure that we could be very much more interesting than that than once a week. And when I when we first started, a lot of people told me that if you only do once a week, you'll never get anywhere. And obviously that's not true. But if you are consistent and you start to build an audience, I think that's really important. The other thing that I think is really important for anybody is just to start. I think the hardest part is just to pick a name and pick a site and make a commitment that we did every Sunday. I think even if you just did you know, the first of the month, that the way the internet works and those little Google spiders are always looking for stuff. So if they can find you repeatedly, it's really great. And the other recommendation I would have is, I, I think you all got the little flyers about our website. We have a travel writing contest on right now. And we publish all the articles that are reasonable. It, like, occasionally you get some with no punctuation. Those don't usually make it. But um, they come from around the world. In our last contest, we had 188 writers from 31 countries. So um, our site is does give, it has good ratings. So if it's something you're interested in, and those articles on our site are there permanently, we leave them up. So I worked um, on the ships, and then I was a teacher, and then we started traveling. And it was George's idea that we were going to keep a journal on the trip and write a book. And for most of the trip, we both kept journals until I.
saw it was such an amazing festival, and the woman in me was like, yeah, you need to write about it for somebody else. So that was a little bit. That's a good question. I have a highlight. Um, we we went to the Philippines on this trip, which was the first time. A, a lot of the places we went in the last 15 months were places one or both of us had already been. We went to Myanmar, which was really important for us to go together. We'd both been, um, but it was part of how we met. When I first wrote to George, I talked about the Shwedagon Pagoda, but I didn't say where it was. And he was very impressed that I must really be a traveler, so I kind of So we, we needed to go together. But we went to the Philippines because it was part of this hopping home. We have to be in Los Angeles next week for a family event, or honestly, I think we would have just stayed in Asia. But um, we got invited by a friend of a friend who also has a book. And just like we met Yen from doing Meet Plan Go, and, we met another friend, my friend Jesse, that runs a site called Wandering Educators, wrote a book with a friend of hers in the Philippines. So we wrote to Risa, and we said, we're coming. And she said, oh, do you think you might like to swim the whale sharks? And I wrote her back in all capital letters, as big as I could, like, yes, we want to swim the whale sharks. And over the next couple of weeks when we were organizing our trip, she must have asked me every time she wrote to me, do you think you might want to swim the whale sharks? So that really, for me, was one of an amazing highlight. We, when we did the briefing for the swimming with the whale sharks, they are very specific that you shouldn't swim close to the whale sharks. They are supposed to have like you know, four meters between you and the whale sharks. Whale sharks are as big as a school bus. Unfortunately, they did not tell that to the whale sharks. So we are in the water. They, the fishermen started feeding the whale sharks in Oslo because they were following them and eating all the bait off their fishing lines. So the fishermen just started feeding them so they would kind of stay in one area and they could still fish. And someone figured out that tourists would like to come and visit the whale sharks. So literally, they're feeding them while you're in the water and they're throwing the food near you. So we were, George and I were swimming and there's, I mean, the mouth is gigantic and the whale sharks is coming at you and you're like, no one give the memo to the whale shark, do not swim near the people. So that was an amazing highlight for us. And I put the photo of us swimming with the whale sharks in our newsletter. And I got an email from my mom that said, is that you? <laughs> who, who else would I be? Long time, um, not try to see everything, we travel more slowly. And we keep trying to do that ourselves. We try to spend, um, our first trip we try to spend at least three days in each location. I don't mean each country, each spot where we stay. And now we're trying to up it to about five days or even longer. Um, we spent as long as a couple of months in one location in uh, Thailand. And that's one of the most memorable things I had during this trip. So I would say travel slowly and not try to see everything because you never can see everything. It's, it's really not possible. What do you think? I think that's a great tip. And I also think one of the best things for us is sometimes feel like we get adopted by people. Like when we were in Mongo uh, China, we were going to Mongolia, it was the last country on our the trip in the book. And the train from Beijing to Ulaanbaatar was very expensive and was also full. So George kept saying, there's no way this is how the local people travel. There's no way they take a $300 train ride. So we just kind of kept waiting and finally we were at Leo's hostel in Beijing and one day at breakfast this guy sat down and we were chatting and he said, he said, you know, do you know what's good to do here? And we've gotten a list from someone that had been uh, teaching in Beijing. We said, yeah, but we're trying to figure out what to do, how to get to the Long Bataan. And he goes, oh, I just came on the local train. And he had to take the local overnight bus, and then the local train took a little bit longer, but was very reasonably priced. So I think talking to people that are on the road, going in the other direction, the, getting local advice has definitely been one of the best things for us. And how much of the trip that you guys just took, the 15-month trip, was planned? <laughs> Almost none. Well, when we left, we had the flight. We flew on miles from Los Angeles to Bali, so it cost us $40. And we had the first two nights of hotel. But that was it. Almost so, like, 
That actually, we, we keep saying that we said go travel. Our website is someday going to take care of us before we left. And we said go travel has started to take care of us. So the first two nights we were hosted by a, a big Indonesian agency. And they put us up in the hotel. So those two nights we knew where we were. And then we were sort of more on our own. And we had um, a few places we've been there a few times. So now there's a bunch of places we like to go back to. So. So we go back to Bali next time. We know exactly where we're where we're gonna go and where we're gonna stay specifically.